All right, hello everyone and welcome back to another 5K tennis discussion. Today is Saturday, February 29th, leap year 2020, correct? <laughs> I wonder how Sissy Poss feels. How do you think he feels? Yeah, let's start the show Does right there. Does he feel there. like an idiot? I don't know. 14-0 record for Djokovic. On it's Dubai. On, on the year. Yeah, I think Novak is now 14-0 on the year. I think he's won something like 20 straight matches or something like that since last year. I may be wrong there. But I, I think now after the after the win over... It's 14-0. Stefanos Sissipas is, is, makes him 14-0. 14-0. I know a lot of you guys there that are not huge Djokovic fans are pissed mm -hmm. off that he's winning. But the reality is, is like I told you guys, none of these guys are mentally checked in. We saw Monfils had him, but we know Monfils is a clown, right? He can never finish a match, three match points against him. And Djokovic is just, he's so focused. He's like Federer and Nadal. They just know how to get through those matches. They have so much, when you have that much confidence as a tennis player, when you win that much, it's hard to beat you. I don't care if you're down 5-0, 5-0, it doesn't matter. You have, if you have that confidence in you, which obviously Djokovic has, you can still win the match. And that's what we've always said. These guys are the best. I mean, we watched uh, Dimitrov yesterday, you know, could have done something to Nadal, but in the, instead Nadal won easily. We've seen Federer at the Australian Open down many match points against Sangren, and he still came through. These guys. Well, and, I would, I would hope. I, would, I mean, looking back, I mean, no disrespect. Who else had no, him? No disrespect. Who else had him though in that tournament? There was a couple. Let players. me finish the thought. Uh, no disrespect to Tennis Sandgren, but geez, if 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 you're if you have given if you've given up seven match points to to Tennis Sandgren, then I think there's a problem yeah, with the opponent I'm, of who was playing Tennis Sandgren, namely Roger Federer in that match. But anyway, what that, I'm saying is that you could be down for a long time, and it just doesn't matter when you have that much confidence, you can beat these type of sub. Subpar players, because that's what they are. Sissy Pass, yeah, I mean, you could beat a Felix Ashe Alicium. Who did he beat before this? Evans, which wasn't a big deal, in my opinion. But to beat someone that's a Grand Slam champion, that's won this many slams, 17 now, is a tough task. And I just don't see any generation, old generation, new generation, next, next generation, beat these guys. These guys are going to have to retire. They're going to have to retire or be... Injure one leg down, one arm down. I don't know. Uh, these guys, your your trio of these guys, again, in my opinion, moving forward, I think there's a duo. Uh, I think. Well, there's I, no Federer, so let's take out Federer. It's I, just Nadal and I, I, Djokovic now, right? Man, I can't even get a, I can't even get two words out of my mouth. You shouldn't today. get a word in because you always get it in. Okay. Discipline, I, I just, just I, I like forgot like she's she's ramped up today. No, my shoulder hurts. I'm like slow mo because it's uh uh it's 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 like an hour before my mom comes. What's up, mom? I can't wait for that. Let's go, dear mama. You are appreciated, don't you know it, dear mama? Wait, but the, let me tell you okay. something. Oh, I just, oh, oh, I just oh, got oh, off the phone oh. with one of our students, right? That just oh. played a tournament, right? Oh. And what I gotta say is the same thing to him. These young guys, they forgot how to fight. Because the, the kid gets double bageled, yes. They don't know how okay, to fight. Okay, but back to what people actually care about. Mm -hmm. um, I want to rewind to what you said about uh, Gal Monfils, first and foremost. Um, I agree with what you said. Monfils, by the way, started the year, or not started the year, but post um, the Australian Open time frame, he went 13-0 and in matches. Granted, in much smaller tournaments against half of the um, level of opponent, by the way, but still nonetheless had a good run. However, there's an old saying that I apply... Uh, to Gal Monfils. When the tough get going, Gal Monfils turns into a clown. Um, <laughs> uh, he'll throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink, just trying to distract you, but ultimately he ends up hunched over um, and begging for attention. He's um, a drama queen. Now, yesterday, um, I, I called out a score that I thought the match uh, against Sisti Pass and Djokovic would be. And, you know, I thought that Djokovic might, you know, um, uh, make the people in the stands stay longer by making it a three setter. Uh, but it was I, I, my the score I projected was six three three six six three or something like that, and I thought I was on track because the first set was six three, and then Sisti Pass was up a break in the second. But the greatest the greatest a returner of all time uh, broke back, and, and the rest is history. Um, I know a lot of, of of you out there get tired of um, Djokovic winning. I know a lot of you, uh, well, not a lot of you understood like you group, but before this show was even thought of. 
Um, I remember during Fetter's heyday when we were all into Fetter this much, um, it, it would 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 say, you know, gosh, you know, is Fetter going to win everything? You know, finally, fi I mean, we've said we've heard this uh, for many years, uh, decades of time as, as players um, become, you know, the Sampras time. You know, well, I can't say he really won everything. So no, I, Sampras I, didn't. Yeah, I, I think that the, the this this context would apply with the likes Fetter. of Nadal, Fetter, and. Um, Djokovic. Now, Djokovic and Nadal kind of, you know, it, it began around the same time frame. Federer was a little prior to that, but people got tired of Federer winning a long time ago. I did. I, I couldn't stand him. Um, couldn't stand him. Uh, but I, I do want to say, um, currently though, currently, I'm not tired of Novak Djokovic winning because is it fair um, to Djokovic to to even imply that? And let me explain that. When and let's use boxing for an example. You know, you remember like. Um, Young Mike Tyson comes in there, you know, and, and he's knocking everybody out in the first round with the exception of a few, you know, and he's undefeated and he's, he's a tank. Um, you know, and the talk, and this is when I was 14, 15 years old, still talking boxing with some of my buddies then. You know, we, we would all, you know, some people would be like, you know, is it a weak boxing era or, you know, what is it, you know? So, so what I'm saying is, 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 I don't think it's because the era is weak. I think it's just that he's this good. Um, well, that was my question. It, it's not. It's not Djokovic's fault that right now he is as good as he is, and, and and he has continued to be consistently, with the exception of his injury year, what a year and a half ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. But he's been consistently good, uh, um, and it's not his fault. I do not think that the era is weak. I just think it's he is a specimen. Um, he is a perfect, complete tennis player at this point, with the exception of the two-handed backhand. Sorry, shoot me later. I have to disagree hate, with him. I, I, I dislike. I disagree it. with I dislike you. the two-hander. Disagree with you. The two-hander has a lot more advantages. That's why I put the two-hander on Gabby. Okay. It's it's just easier to teach. You know, you don't struggle as much. I did one-handed and two-handed. That's why I went back to the two-handed. The one-handed, there's a lot of weakness to it. But if you can perfect it, like players like Rorinka then it becomes a weapon. Yeah. But it's tough to do. I, I, again, I think anyone that, that indicates that they're tired of someone winning, it doesn't have to I'm be Djokovic. I'm not tired of him It winning. doesn't have to be Djokovic. It can be any any sport where there's a dominant athlete that shows up and wins like everything. Like what? Sean White and Snowboard. Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps in yeah. swimming. And we, we hear, it. what was it, Kevin Johnson back in the day in track, Usain uh, Bolt. Serena used to win everything in so, Venus. So there's nothing new under the sun about this. I think if you're the one saying it, then I think you have to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself if you actually like the person as a player. Or, or, no, the or problem here. I, I don't. If you're if you're a, if you're a, if you're a fan and open minded, I don't think you can say that. No, the problem here is that these players know that Djokovic is good. Again, he mm -hmm. comes in with confidence, and it's just not him. It's Nadal and Clay too. They come in with confidence, so they're kind of already beat down already, knowing that to beat these guys, they're gonna have to play not just their A game. They're gonna have to hope for you know good luck in there too. So I mean, they're already going in there losing. A, a, a mental check off before yeah. they even walk on the court. Yes, definitely. Uh, understandable, but a walk in the park type match for for Djokovic. He wasn't even playing that lights out of tennis. He was no. just consistent. Yeah, pretty he, much. He, he was six feet inside the lines. Three, I felt like I, 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 like I no could have hit back with him. Really, watching him play, just get the ball back. So not not a surprise at all. Um, again, no shocker moving forward. If Djokovic does not win Indian Wells, no shocker. If Djokovic does not That's win a, Miami. Yeah, uh, the, who cares if he wins it or not? No, you know, who no cares? shocker. Uh, I mean, we know Federer's not going to be there. Nadal will be. So um, there will be some in interesting matches. But again, in my opinion right now, wins or losses and, and anything less than majors for Novak is really trivial. Um, again, this tournament looked exhibitionary. Um, even in the Monfils match where he was down uh, four, three, four match points, Carlo was like, Djokovic is still going to win this, um, and, and he did. So good for him. Uh, great, great, great win. Uh, we'll give him. <laughs> now he goes, my shoulder's killing me. Ooh, my court is uh, kicking my butt. <laughs> let's go. All right, uh, enough about that good win moving forward. Uh, next uh, topic that we have is going to be a comment from a young man in, in South Africa, uh, Gene Swart, um, big time tennis mind. We always enjoy his stuff. Young guy with a big tennis mind. Yeah, big tennis mind. He wrote a comment referring to uh, the the doping in sports, melodonium, uh, and in and, and context with Sharapova and the like. So read it, um, um, and and we'll discuss it just for a moment. Sure. He says while the physical reasons for doping are obvious, the psychological reasoning is less obvious. It often gets lost amongst the public outcry. And dopers rarely speak out after the event. So what are the deepest seated reasons why players resort to a chemical boost? Is it simple peer pressure? 
Or does it stem from a feeling of inferiority or even invincibility? Culture is the key word here. Just as teenagers can be pressured into trying drugs, such as cannabis, for the first time, tennis players may come in contact with people who offer a boost in performance without any of the hard work. It's a common theme in the stories of many athletes who have previously doped. For example, an ex-bodybuilder told the BBC that it's all honest, it, in all honesty, it was a cheat and something to get ahead of the other guys in the gym. I looked around the gym and the other guys were getting ahead of me and I wonder why. Peer pressure was one of the reasons I took them. We can speculate all we want why Sharapova used a specific substance, but we don't know what her reasons were or whether she did it on purpose. I think she shouldn't be inducted in the Hall of Fame, but they should all... But they should or should not? Shouldn't. Shouldn't be inducted in the Hall of Fame, but they also have to reconsider... By discussing, looking back at her track record on the court throughout her career before she used the substance, then they can make a fair decision on her. All right, I'll, before I lose my train of thought, let me let me let me say something right back. First of all, Gene Swart must love out there. Um, but I look, I, I, I the end of your statement, I totally disagree with, one hundred percent wholeheartedly. Uh, I think who was the other guy, tennis sir? Was it tennis sir? That uh, I think tennis sir is the one that him and I are on, like right on the same brainwave. Um, and maybe it's because um, uh, what I get a feel, and I think it's tennis, sir. Uh, but when you're when you're, um, um, I, I guess you can say, um, really into and passionate about a lot of sports, um, tennis obviously being primarily, but just grew up around a lot of athletes and sports and a lot of other sports and the same type of topics about Hall of Famers um, that deal with other sports and players within those other sports. And I can promise you, in any other league, uh, NFL, uh, NBA. Uh, Major League Baseball, you're not getting in in the hall. You're just not. No matter what, you're not getting in because of. I don't care if it was your last day uh, on the job and 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 you pissed in the bucket uh, and and took a crap on the showroom floor. If it's your last day at work, guess what? You're done. You're fired. You're on the spot. It's over. You're done. You got you got fired with with in an at will state with no benefits. See ya. There's the door. You can't sue me because you you jacked yourself up. If it's banned, let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go back into the Pete Roses that co- that played for 20 years or however many years and then coached whatever and then got in trouble as the, the latter part of coaching, and he still is. I'm not going to get into that. Um, but what do we need to have now? A rule book for cheating? I mean, do we need to have a book? You know, we got the rule book, you know, for the rules of being a sportsman and following the rules and what's legal and what's illegal and what's a foul and what's not a foul and what's in and what's out. Now I guess we need to get a damn rule book for damn cheating. Uh, page 22. Well, I only cheated for, uh, six months in my career. I didn't career the whole, I didn't cheat the whole time. So let me see. I should get this, 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 and this. So now she paid the price though. Exactly. She paid the price. Right. She, she, she played like ass after she came she back. Month had, band. She retired and, 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 and say la vie. But what I'm saying is I don't care. And, 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 and per- she should have done what Hingis did. And, and per- just retired, not play. And, not even get banned. And professional sports. The integrity of the Hall of Fame is this. This this argument is nothing about Maria Sharapova. Forget about Sharapova. Use use Manny Ramirez. Use uh, a- Alex Rodriguez. You, who use anybody the heck you want? Uh, Marion Jones. Pick one. The moral of the story here is you got fired on the job, basically suspended, whatever, because you jacked up. Go to work and do that. You work, and someone's your boss, and and you take a shit on their desk. You know, are you? They, were they going to say, okay, well, just get suspended and come on back and everything's great and you'll get in the Hall of Fame later because you shit on my desk and I, and I, you know, I, I said it was okay. It, that's not how it works. You're a professional athlete. If you get caught doing something that's banned, whatever, I don't care the time frame, it's out. You're not getting in the Hall of Fame. But maybe like coaching on the sidelines for the women boxes and however that jack goes down. Maybe they're just, maybe it's too nice of a sport to let people that get caught cheating in. I don't care what the length of time is. Some of you do. Shoot me on whatever. But if you get caught crapping on the desk at work, you're going to get fired. And that does not mean you retain the rights to the Hall of Fame. Ask Pete Rose. Yeah, and they said the reason why in January 2016 tennis is banded was because they found mm-hmm. out that it was an enhancing performance, the intention of enhance of, of an enhancement. So I don't know. All right. Well, oh, no, she has to sleep that. with that, not me. So. All right. So the next, uh, the next, co- the, the next topic actually um, is something that uh, was uh, a light bulb turned on by a viewer um, by uh, the the viewer name. But well, before we get to that, 
Remember, we're going to talk about Sabalenka a little bit? Let me finish this. Okay. Because I'm going to get down with the viewer comments. Okay, gotcha. So, th this viewer comment came in um, from this guy, 1000, and, 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 and uh, him and I kind of chat back and forth quite a bit, at least here recently. Um, but we did a show a couple of days ago, and just real quickly, Carla and I did this topic about Kyle Edmund um, letting uh, Felix Ashe Eliassime have an ace um, that was called out by the line judge, and he didn't have any challenges left on game point. So Felix Ashe Eliassime was serving, boom, it went up the tee, linesman says, oh, um, he wanted to challenge it because it was clearly in, but uh, he didn't have any challenges. The, the chair umpire said, you know, I can't overrule that. So Edmund was like, you know what? That was in. Um, you got the game. Let's go. Let's go change sides. Um, we, we only spent a really a, a second on it, but, uh, but here comes this guy. 1000 caught it. What's up? He was watching. Let's get down. Boom. That sent this message, uh, in relation to that comment. And here's what he wrote. You know, that was very admirable for Edmund, but would he do the same if it were a tight match and a grand slam? Would anyone? No. I don't think so. No. no hold, on. hold on. You no. interjected during his comment. Oh, let's brother. finish his quote here. That's respectable. Yeah, 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 She's yeah. antsy today. Let's let's respect the I quote. I thought you were done. You talk slow. Oh, these Latin women, man, are all crazy, man. <laughs> don't marry one of these things. They're they're they're, they're not human. They're they're partial. Yeah, don't marry them. You won't have fun with them at all. Well, I can't even finish someone's don't quote. Don't marry one. Don't. Can I finish this quote, please? You want to take that back? Can, it, it will end in the word thoughts. Can you? Shh. You gonna take that back? I'm sorry. I love you, but <laughs> all right. So, can I finish the brother's quote though? That would be nice. You know, here's Martin Luther King having a speech. I have a. Someone's like, so do I. <laughs> Come on, man. You're right. I'm sorry. Don't interrupt I'm the sorry speech. I'm sorry this guy. You know, this is a good speech. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. He wrote this. Admirable for Kyle Edmund, but would he do the same if it were a tight match in a Grand Slam? Would anyone? I don't think so. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Carla? I don't think so. I mean, it's a Grand Slam. That's where you have umpires, machines calling. No, you don't want to. What about if that meant you go into the final? No way. He said first round, second round. You think he would do that at Grand Slam? Um, no, I don't. Because the more rounds you win, the more points and the more prize money and the better for your career. No, I don't think he would. So you're telling me you would sell your soul than doing the moral right thing? It's not my job to do. It's not my job to do. They got umpires. They got machines. Okay, wait a minute. So you're telling me Capriati when she played against she Serena missed. Williams. I might as well just get up and walk away. But you're asking me a question. You just you, asked me the question. She, she sounds like a boat motor. Like, but, like a boat motor's like... I won't, woo, say, woo, I won't woo, talk woo. for the rest of the show. You just asked me a question. Well, I can't get my question out. I wasn't done with what I was saying. Okay, go but ahead. Go ahead. Now go ahead. I forgot okay, what I was going to say now. You said you're telling me. Okay. She just says that's what the umpires are for. If they, if that's up to them to do their job, not mine. So you're going to tell me if, you know, some lady just got pushed down and her purse taken in front of the house and the police officer was turned the other way and, 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 and you, you would walk down to the old lady and be like, you know what? I could get you your purse back, but that bozo wasn't doing his job, so stay down. That was stupid. That was the dumbest crap it's I ever... It's the same thing. You're comparing someone's life and someone being danger to a tennis match? Someone's, How life, many someone's life is in danger when they're doing they're winning thirty thousand dollars a round in a that tennis was, match. Mike, you don't know how to compare stuff. That was dumb. How many times have we seen players? So, her, how many times have we seen players use up all their challenges, right? And we've seen Djokovic where the, he could have won a game, but because he ran out of a calls, that was his stupidity saying or her stupidity saying. I think that ball is out, so I'm challenging it. But it was that's actually a different game. context entirely. No, this not. ball was clearly in the line. Judge called it out. Okay. And they, the, both the players saw it in. He served it and saw it in. Kyle Edmonds saw it land So you go in. play that Grand Slam and you say, no, I'm sorry. It was, come on. So, why, would, so, why wouldn't you replay the point? So why you, wouldn't you replay the point? You can only, if, if the umpire doesn't call that, it's up to the players to concede. Did he hit it back? He gave, no, he didn't touch it. It was an ace up the tee. Listen, listen. Listen, Carla, it was an ace. We said that already. And he was Did out he of hit challenges. Well, does Is it, he out of challenges? Does anyone know but the definition of, of an challenges. ace? Did she just say that he hit it back? Oh, my God. Wasn't he out of challenges? Yes. Okay. So the point that was fixing to go back to Deuce, it was add in. He served a clear ace up the tee. Edmund saw it. Um, someone said out. Edmund walked back to, to, to receive the second serve at this point and said, you know what? That was an ace. I give it to you. You win the game. I know that. Good for him. So Carla would obviously sell her soul, then do the moral right thing. Would you guys call? Would you say, yeah, 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 that, that was good. Does anyone believe in karma? Is, does anyone believe in karma? You know what? I've seen so many bad things happen to people in the world. 
Probably okay. not. Okay, no. Okay. I okay. don't uh, deserve uh, it, uh, no. Uh, okay, Carla. Okay, Carla. If that was uh, one of our five children playing Kyle Edmund, would you hope that he did the same thing? I couldn't say. Unbiased? Biased? If it's my kid, it's okay. But if it's not, then fuck off. Sorry. Bleep, <laughs> Bleep that out. <laughs> He definitely has no control over himself, ah, obviously. Let's get down. Now you see what I'm talking about. Karma, selling her soul. I'm not selling my soul. I'm just Jeez. saying it's a tennis match, right? That's why we have we pay linesmen, we pay umpires. Don't they have machines as well? I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think that Edmund would do the same thing in a Grand Slam. I think honestly, Carla would do it, and she's just talking smack. At least I would hope so. You give me benefit of the doubt of her oh, playing yeah, matches. Oh yeah, but I'm not playing a Grand Slam, so. Look, How it, many times you said, Jonathan, man, that looked close. You could have called that out. Anyway, Let's you, what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't know if I would sell Let my soul. Let me see. If Federer would have served... If it was clearly if in, if it was clearly in. Federer would have served an ace, and he was at a challenge against Djokovic uh, at Wimbledon when he had match points, and it was an ace, but he had no more challenges. Do you think Djokovic would call that ball and say, hey, man... You just won Wimbledon because that serve was in. Now, can I say something without you interrupting my sentence? Yeah. What if you said you said Djokovic and Federer playing whatever, just like the Evans and um, I was just Felix? Up okay, you have to understand that they have the world audience, global audience, watching them. I saw it, and as someone watching it on the television. So what would happen if, say, Federer or Djokovic playing themselves in this hypothetical scenario made that type of call? Wouldn't the whole world and their whole fan base then turn against them? Isn't it the moral We've seen thing this to one do? In football. We've seen this in football where calls were made that were bad. Referees made calls, and they could have won. They could have won. They could have gone to the finals, but it didn't happen. All right. Enough of that. Thank you for the category. And uh, making him curse. Shoot. We should make you do, like, something for saying that, because that was none. Ah, right, okay, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to shift gears from uh, that intense category uh, to a more respectable category. And I mean this in a res very respectable way, and I'll do seriousness. Um, Carla and I were chatting last night um, when we were talking tennis about the three most beautiful lady tennis players. Now, let me define the most beautiful. Not just the, their looks. Their looks, okay, but not number one on the list. But their game... Their conduct, their poise, um, their dress, what they do on and off the court, how they present themselves. Uh, when you see them, even if they're retired, I mean, they can they can have played in the twenties for all for all we care. I mean, you can go back to Maureen Connolly or who, whoever. I don't care how far it goes back. Um, but at, 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 at the end of the day, we wanted to come up with our own three, respectively, um, lady tennis players uh, that epitomize the game. Across the board. Carla, I'm going to start with you and you guys put yours in on comments. Roll uh, them obviously off. Obviously, when you look at Steffi Graf, her game was impeccable. Her sportsmanship was impeccable. And you look at her as a lady and you say, damn, that lady still looks good. Okay. Sabatini, hands down. Mm -hmm. Probably number one. Her game wasn't as good as Steffi Graf, but she was always a lady on the court and a lady off the court and okay. represents the sport well. Some of you might disagree with me with this one, but I think Justin Hennan had the most beautiful game. Maybe not the most beautiful girl. But when you look at her, it's a, she's a simple girl, and really, there's nothing trashy I can say about her. And a beautiful one-handed backhand. Beautiful one-handed backhand. Uh, yes. All right, so here's my here's my here's my top three. Uh, number three coming in third, tight battle all the way through. Number three uh, is Gabriella Sabatini. I totally agree. Same brainwave. We named our fourth child out of the five, uh, so our youngest daughter after Gabriella. So Gabriella is named after Sabatini. Her middle name is Cecilia, your middle name. Mm -hmm. So Gabriella Cecilia. Anyway, but go Sabatini. Always loved her a lot. Um, and and I hope I wish she had beat Groff a little bit more. Yeah, she had many finals, yes. Um, number two on the list, and this was a really close battle for number one, by the way, but number two for me is Anna Ivanovic. Uh, Anna Ivanovic, um, which someone corrected me last night. Uh, look for the comment so I can give him a shout out. Uh, he was a, a new, actually he watched us for a while, but just made a comment, I think, last night where I missed out that um, Anna Ivanovich was number one, the one in the world for a little while, 12 weeks. But Anna, Anna Ivanovich comes in number two on my list. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most elegant. Vel Velko, Velko, Tersich. 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 Let's go! Uh, but yeah, he straightened me out and reminded me that, uh, Anna, Anna Ivanovich was number one in the world for 12 weeks. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful lady, um, a beautiful girl. Sure. Wonderful sure. player. Would be on my list, yes. Um, uh, um, and anyway, number one on my list, and, 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 and this is the proof is in the pudding here. Number one is Carla Mora, 
uh, Davis here. She 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 is number one on my list. <laughs> Uh, nope, her her her, her, wow. her legs go unmatched. Uh, she has the legs uh, to beat anyone. Uh, but but number two, um, uh, her game is beatable by me, which makes her number one on my list. I'm kidding, totally. But she's number one on my list. Um, she she's a tough customer, um, and and she's number one. Thank you. All right, so I had one Serbian, I had one Argentinian, and I had one Honduran. I'm surprised you didn't put um Honduran. Let's go. <laughs> you got to read between the lines. I'm first generation American. She's first generation. So, so that makes me Honduran. She's Honduran. Go Honduras. Okay. Let's go. But I, you didn't have Graf. I'm shocked. Well, I, I put... I, I Don't hate me on this one, but I put Ultimate Beauty in here too. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't think Graf was quite nearly as beautiful. She's as, more beautiful now than she was as a player. Yeah. I mean, she she yeah. has transformed into a beautiful, beautiful lady. Yeah. I mean, no disrespect, but yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying the top three. That's who I put. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, you wanted to talk quickly about Sabalenka, a right of Sabalenka. Let's go, Team Swart. Oh, and Wildlife just sent me a message and said, Yo, let's go. Sabalenka, let's go. She let's beat, go. She beat Kvitova, uh at Doha, so good for her. Does this mean anything for Grand Slam championships? Okay. Mm, so, we don't know, right? Because women's is so unstable, I'm not going to say it. I don't think so, but we'll see. For all of you new viewers out there, um, for about a year now on this show, Carla and I have battled back and forth, and a lot of us, by the way, have battled back and forth about me liking Sabalenka and calling her out last year, and me liking her better than Osaka after she won even her second major, and I prophesized that, that Rhino Sabalenka would win her first major before Naomi Osaka won her third. I got laughed at. She's got a bet going on. It still has yet to happen. I got laughed it at. It has yet to happen. It has, it has yet, yet to happen. I understand happen. that. I understand that. But give me some props at least for calling her out last year when everybody was like, huh, huh, she can't get a ball on the court. What's up, Gene Swart? He was, she played she playing him a, a, a sporadic, a, we know a mental case, Kvitova. Kvitova could lose to anybody. Could beat anybody, but she could lose Kvitova's to anybody. Kvitova's won majors. Yes, but since her... Yes, but... Since, since her but, problem with but her what? game... But what? With, since her attack, we've known... That she could have won Australian, and with her, it's always mental. You just never know what type of Kvitova you're going to get. Kvitova... But she gave props to Savalenka, another great player, another a lady on the court. So. That, that's it, everyone. Much love to all. Uh, please subscribe to, to our channel. Actually, it's your channel. Um, you make it work. And um, this is a tennis for that dummy who said, the tennis channel doesn't talk about tennis. You must be a hater. Yeah, I, yeah we read we read a comment. I had to delete the, that. That's the, stupid. The channel that, that, this, that, um, that says they talk about tennis, but they don't. I didn't know we talked about anything else except slid in some stuff here and there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, subscribe to our channel. Take care. It's your channel. Uh, much love to all. Um, adios. Let's go. Uh, and Carla was rough today. By the way, if anybody wants to get me that uh, Lacosta green jacket, Djokovic, send it my way. Oh, oh, oh don't, don't forget. Oh, yeah. we we had an idea. So um, if you notice some of these things on our on our on our desks here, uh, some of these things are souvenirs people sent us. Uh, her friend uh, Bob, um, same last name Davis, uh, went to the Australian Open and sent us um, uh, like a. Cooler for yeah, your we cup. Got a few other things. Uh, you know, a ball. This is a trophy from a junior win in a tennis tournament. Um, this is like a nineteen, like uh, like forty, uh, how to learn tennis pamphlet handout. So the, the this I is, think this one that, was that, Barbara. Yeah, that's an, that, that's an in, Indian Wells yeah. tournament map from last year. So I think the glue just came out. Oh, it just and he just ripped it. So this is, this is so we, so anyway. If if you ever want to send some type of like a souvenir or something, um, we will put it out here. I think Rahesh last year sent us a robot, but the robot got destroyed by my four year old. That was the whole point in the first place. He got it for him. But if you send something, let us know. We can send you an address and we'll put it up here on the wall back behind us. Uh, much love. Uh, take care, um, and we will see you uh, mañana. Can't wait. Let's go. Peace.